Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to one of your favorite videos that I have ever put out on my channel and that is my five nights of dinner. Do you want five nights of WW friendly comfort food, delicious, amazing, family friendly meals? Then you my friends have come to the right place. Stay tuned for an entire five nights of WW friendly dinners. The points values will all be included and all of the recipes are linked right down there in the description box below. So if you wanna see five nights of dinner, all you have to do is keep watching. For tonight's dinner, we are going to be making Tex-Mex meaty mac and cheese. I cannot wait to make this recipe. Whoever thought you could have mac and cheese on WW? Well, my friends, yes, yes you can. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. So first you're going to need some extra lean ground turkey. This is the 99% fat free. You're also going to need some pasta. My recipe is going to be made with fiber gourmet. This pasta is two ounces for only three points versus two ounces for six points of regular pasta. So I love this pasta. I have heard time and time again that you can't tell the difference. And in fact, people often say they like this pasta better than regular pasta. You can purchase this down in my Amazon store in the description box below. You're also going to need some salt some salsa. The recipe called for yellow onion, so I'm gonna just go ahead and use minced onion. I really like minced onion. It cooks down a lot faster, and it, I think it has really, really good flavor in these types of dishes. Pepper, taco seasoning, cilantro. I'm gonna do a mix of fat-free cheddar and light shredded mozzarella, or light shredded Mexican blend. So let's get started on tonight's Tex-Mex meaty mac and cheese. So the first thing that you wanna do is get your pan warmed up. To your pan, you're gonna go ahead and add your pound of ground turkey. You are also going to add your cut up onion or minced onion, whatever it is that you decide to use. And you're gonna give that a good stir. Let that cook until your turkey is completely cooked through. You're also going to get a pot coming to a boil so that we can add in our pasta. Our pasta is boiling away. We want to go ahead and cook it al dente. And then we are going to drain and rinse. Our ground turkey is browned. Our onion looks delicious. So what we are going to do is just add that to a large bowl. And then we are going to put the rest of our ingredients into this bowl. Once you've added your ground turkey and onions to a bowl, we are going to go ahead and add one quarter cup of chopped cilantro. Now, I love cilantro, but my husband, not a huge fan. I would have probably added more, but this should still give it that nice Tex-Mex flavor. To that, we are also gonna go ahead and add in our package of taco seasoning. Now, the original recipe calls for cumin and chili powder, but I decided to just go ahead and skip that and go with taco seasoning, add a little bit more flavor as well. We are going to add in some salsa. Now, this is meaty. I usually will use mild. My husband, again, not a big hot person. So I went ahead and added only half of the jar um, because they did not have any mild salsa. So they substituted me with medium. So I just don't want to go too crazy. So I'm going to add half of the jar. I'm also going to add in a little bit of salt. The taco seasoning does also have salt in it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of black pepper as well. Give that another quick stir. And then we are going to add in our cheese. Only a little bit of our cheese. The rest of it's going to go on top. So I have one cup of the light, one cup of the fat-free. So I'm literally just gonna put just a little handful into my bowl, just so that my filling has a little bit of cheese. And then the last thing that we need to add in is our pasta. Once you add in your pasta, we're gonna give that a nice big stir, get everything nice and combined together. And then we are going to be putting that 
into our greased 9 by 13 pan and into a 375 degree oven. Of course, after we add our cheese. So I'm going to get this nice and mixed together. We'll get it put into our pan and I'll show you our pasta right before it goes into the oven. Once your pasta is all stirred together, we are going to go ahead and add it directly to our 9 by 13 pan. Now I did taste it and it definitely has a kick, even with half of a jar of salsa. Now the original recipe he calls for an entire jar and some of that may stem from the taco seasoning as well so I'm glad that I only did half of a jar for our taste buds I don't mind a little heat but my husband he always he's like the first to admit he's a wuss when it comes to heat so go ahead and spread that into the bottom of your 9 by 13 pan as evenly as you can and then this is where we're gonna go ahead and add in the good stuff the cheese we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that over the top of our pasta and then we're going to loosely cover it with foil and put it into our oven at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. We want to make sure our cheese is not only nice and bubbly but everything is cooked through and nice and combined. So look at that Tex-Mex Cheesy Mac. Cannot wait. I just pulled our Tex-Mex Mac and Cheese out of the oven. Cheesy deliciousness is awaiting. I'm going to let this rest for just a couple of minutes. I'm warming up some veggies for a side and I will show you my completed dinner and give you the smart points. So here is tonight's dinner. So what I did is went ahead and cut my big pan of pasta into four equal servings. So you can either do four servings with the fiber gourmet pasta exactly how I made it for only five smart points or you can bump it up to six servings for four smart points. So I decided to go with four servings. This is a lot of delicious Tex-Mex mac and cheese. I did go ahead and top it with a little bit of cilantro and one tablespoon of light sour cream. I paired it with a little bit of the soy catash from Trader Joe's. This is simply corn, edamame, and red peppers. So this entire dinner is a total of six smart points and that includes the sour cream. You guys, Tex-Mex mac and cheese, six points. For tonight's dinner, we are keeping it green and filled with veggies, and we are going to be making a copycat Panera bread recipe. It is the Fuji apple chicken salad. Now, I cannot wait for this. It sounds so good. Now, our salad is going to have points because we are putting a lot of really delicious stuff in there. So first I'm going to show you what's in the dressing. We are making it from scratch and then I'm going to show you what is in the salad. So first in the dressing, you're going to need some olive oil, some apple cider vinegar, some garlic. You can use fresh minced. I'm going to use this dried lighthouse garlic. You're also going to need some white balsamic vinegar, some Dijon mustard, and some honey. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this sugar-free honey. I like this because it has way less points than regular honey. You can't even tell the difference. I did buy this on nutrition.com. So this is everything here that is in our dressing. For our salad, we're of course going to need 50-50 blend. We need some dried apple chips, some reduced sugar cranberries, feta cheese, chicken, a red onion, some pecans, and last but not least, some cherry or grape tomatoes. So let's get started on our copycat Fuji apple salad. So the first thing we need to do is get our chicken cooking. So what I did is I went ahead and sprayed my pan with some nonstick cooking spray. I really like this 100% pure avocado oil spray. So I've diced up my two breasts of chicken. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt to my chicken as it's cooking and also just a little bit of pepper. We're gonna let this chicken get nice and cooked through and browned up. I also crushed up about three ounces of raw pecans. I've put them here in a pan because I'm going to toast them. It really enhances the flavor, gives that nice crispy texture to our pecans. So those are the first two things to get started on our salad. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our dressing together, our chicken and pecans are just about done. So here I have my one and a half tablespoons of white balsamic vinegar, which by the way is so good. I'm also going to be adding in my garlic. I'm just gonna go ahead and wing it. I like my food garlicky, so 
really excited about that. One third cup of olive oil. So I did modify the original recipe a little bit just to make it a little more WW friendly. I have two tablespoons of my sugar-free honey. And then I'm also going to add in a couple of teaspoons of just regular Dijon mustard. Sorry, my camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of Dijon mustard. And then all we're going to do for our dressing, you guys, easy breezy, is just go ahead and give it a whisk. And your dressing is good to go. And then I'm just going to divide this into two equal servings. Maybe three. We'll see how much dressing we actually end up with. And then that is what is going to go on our Panera salad. So let's put together our salad. I grabbed a nice big bowl. This is the main entree tonight. So first I'm going to add some of my 50-50 blend of my salad mix. And feel free to add as much lettuce as you want to your bowl. It is zero points. I'm not going to go too crazy only because I have a lot of fun toppings that I want to add as well. And more salad means more dressing and that does have points so to that i have my cooked up chicken breast i'm going to go ahead and add about half of it because i made two breasts one for myself and one for my husband and then i have measured out one ounce of the trader joe's fat free feta i love this feta cheese so much so i'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that on my salad i also went ahead and measured out one tablespoon of the reduced sugar craisins so we'll put those on there Ugh, this looks so good you guys i also went ahead and measured out one quarter of an ounce of toasted pecans pecans are really high in points so as i put these on my salad i am going to go ahead and kind of break them up that way i can get a little bit of pecans in every bite now if you have excess points i would recommend if you're going to up anything in this salad go ahead and up your pecans for not only flavor but for some extra protein I've also went ahead and measured out one quarter cup of my apple chips. Now, if you buy apple chips without sugar like I should have done, you can probably have more in your salad for the points, or you can use fresh apple for zero, but the recipe actually does call for dried apple chips. So I unfortunately can only put a quarter of a cup or a quarter of an ounce because mine are extremely high in smart points because I bought the ones with added sugar. Not smart. I also went ahead and diced up some cherry tomatoes in half or grape tomatoes and some red onion. So I'm going to just go ahead and take about half of what I diced up and add that also to my salad. And then lastly, we will do our dressing. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my dressing by the tablespoon because I think that that's going to be the most accurate way to count my dressing. All right, so for my dressing, I have my tablespoon here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with one tablespoon, kind of drizzle that over the top. I'm feeling with as much as I have here, and this being my main entree, I'm gonna go ahead and go with two tablespoons of my dressing. So my points will be calculated based on the two tablespoons. But look at this salad, how fresh, delicious, sweet, crunchy does this look so of course the smart points are here on the screen now again if you substitute non-sugar added dried apples you can add more you can also do less olive oil your dressing would just be thicker but again this is all i'm having for dinner so i'm going to make sure that it uses up my dinner allowed points and this is going to be such a fabulous dinner on a nice warm spring or summer day so bon appetit for your panera fuji apple chicken salad for tonight's dinner, we are having deep dish sloppy joe casserole. This is an Emily Bites recipe. She is one of my very favorite WW recipe bloggers. I am thrilled to make this recipe. It sounds so good. I will let you know up front that I am omitting the cayenne that is in the recipe. And I'm also omitting the tomato paste. I didn't realize... I didn't have any, I thought I had a tube in my fridge. So I'm omitting those two ingredients, but let me show you the rest of what is in our deep dish sloppy joe casserole. So you're going to need some onion. I'm using minced onion rather than raw onion. I like this better in a casserole style of meal. You also need some Montreal steak seasoning. So instead I'm going to use Dax, Dax Steakhouse, this seasoning, you guys, is so good. Zero salt, the flavors are absolutely phenomenal, and the ingredients are all real. 
spices, mustard, dehydrated garlic, dehydrated onion. That's it. So if you're looking for a really flavorful, salt-free recipe, especially when you got to weigh in, you have to watch the salt, Dax is amazing. I do have a 10% discount code and link down in the description box below. So tonight, I'm using Dax Steakhouse. You're going to need some brown sugar, a thin pizza crust, red wine vinegar, tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce, mushrooms, one pound of extra lean ground beef, I'm doing 96.4, minced garlic, light mozzarella, of course, I'm going to do my Trader Joe's, and lastly, you're going to need a carrot. So, so the first thing you're going to do is take your mushrooms and your carrot, and you're going to put it in to a food processor because you want it nice and minced, very small gum paste-like texture. So that is done. And then we are going to start cooking up our hamburger. Next, we're going to get ready to ground or brown our ground beef. So I have added my one pound of 96.4 Trader Joe's extra lean ground beef. We are going to let this brown for just a couple of minutes. Then we're gonna add in our steakhouse seasoning and we'll be ready to add in some of our veggies. Once your hamburger starts to brown just a little bit, it is time to add in our Dax Steakhouse seasoning. So I'm just going to give it a nice shake. Go ahead and season to your liking. Remember Dax is salt free, so you don't have to overdo it. Montreal is a little, okay, a lot of salty. So you do kind of have to watch with Montreal, but Dax is salt free, so you're just after those flavors. So we're gonna let this cook down a little bit more before we add in some more ingredients. Once your hamburger is cooked most of the way through, we're gonna go ahead and add in our mushroom and carrot mixture that we did in our food processor. You know what, I mean, I don't know that this is a good thing to say in a cooking video, but it actually kind of looks a little bit like canned dog food. But don't, but it doesn't taste that way, guys. It doesn't taste that way. It just has that, that little bit of look. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Ooh, we got a couple carrot chunks. Food processors are tough to sometimes get consistent. So I'm gonna pull those out. We are also going to add in our minced onion. It did call for half of an onion minced. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add about that amount of minced onion. And then last, we are going to add two huge spoonfuls of garlic. We're gonna give that just kind of a quick stir, and then we're gonna add in our red wine vinegar and also our Worcestershire sauce. So give that kind of a mix up. The mushroom carrot mixture actually bulks this up, makes it feel like you're, you have more filling for your casserole, and you won't even notice that there's the carrots and things in there um, when you go to eat it because they were mint. So you're not even going to notice. And then go ahead and grab your tablespoon, and you are gonna go ahead and add in some of your red wine vinegar. So one tablespoon of that. And Sorry, my memory card got full there. So I did go ahead and add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. So we're just gonna let this cook down just a little bit, get those flavors nice and melted together before we add in our tomato sauce and our brown sugar. Once your sloppy joe mix has cooked down for about five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add in our can of tomato sauce. You would also add in your tomato paste at this point. I can't believe that I forgot that. I'm usually really on the ball with that kind of stuff. And then here I've measured out one tablespoon of brown sugar. So go ahead and add all that. Again, give it a quick stir. We're gonna let this cook down for about another five minutes just to really get those flavors melded together. And then we are going to move on to our dough and our cheese and get this into the oven. But this is looking delish. So while that finishes cooking, we're gonna go ahead and spray our nine by 13 pan with some nonstick cooking spray. So give that a nice coat. We definitely don't want our dough sticking to the bottom of our pan. Then I went ahead and I opened up my pizza dough and we are just going to roll this out into our pan. So go ahead and get it kind of rolled out like you would if you were doing a pizza. 
a trick that I think with this type of a dough, because it is wobbly and can be kind of hard to work with, is I will roll it out on top here first, and then I kind of drop it down in to my casserole dish. And then we are also going to want to work up the sides a little bit, but you usually have a lot left over. So I typically will even just kind of tear it off and go ahead and get that nice layer in the bottom first because we want this to resemble a pizza, like a calzone. We want it to have a crust. So I'm going to tear off that excess dough, get this nice and molded into the bottom first, and then I'm going to take my leftover dough and I'm going to go ahead and mold a crust around the base. And when this cooks, it will all cook together. You won't have your crust separate from your bottom of your of your casserole. So go ahead and just create your crust and then we'll be ready to add that filling to the bottom. Once you get your crust in the bottom of your pan, go ahead and grab your sloppy joe mix and we are gonna go ahead and pour this directly over our pizza crust. And you're gonna get that nice and spread out within the area here that you have dough. So get that nice and spread out, and then we'll be ready to add in some cheese. So here is our casserole. We're gonna pop this in the oven at 425 for about 12 minutes. Then we're gonna pull it out, add some mozzarella cheese, throw it back in the oven for a couple more, and this already looks and smells so delicious. Once you pull your deep dish sloppy joe casserole out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and add in some light shredded cheese. You wanna add one cup to the top, and then we are going to put this back into the oven to finish cooking. Get that cheese nice and melted. Then we will pull it out and our dinner is served. But this looks so delicious. Sloppy Joes are so good. And then you add that pizza crust and get that bread in there too, yum. So I'm gonna get this back into the oven and I'll be back to show you our completed dinner. So here is the completed Sloppy Joe deep dish casserole. This looks so good. Look at that crust, cheese. So I'm gonna let this rest for just a few minutes. I have some veggies warming up. I will cut this into six servings. The recipe serves six, show you the serving size, and give you the smart points. So here is our completed dinner. So there is one sixth of the casserole. It is a large serving. And then I've got some of the Trader Joe's soy katash. So it's edamame, corn, and red pepper. So it is zero smart points. I just sprayed it with a little bit of the, I can't believe it's not butter spray, salt and pepper. So this one sixth huge serving of the deep dish sloppy joe casserole is only nine smart points. So this dinner is a total of nine points. Now what you're getting your points from primarily is the pizza crust, but that's okay because look at how good this looks. I mean, seriously, you guys, so good and it's a lot of food. So this is my nine smart point dinner. For dinner tonight, we're gonna be having pulled pork sandwiches. So it's about 6.15 in the morning. I'm gonna get my crock pot and my everything together so it has the chance to cook throughout the day. So what I have in here is I have one of the pork loin roast and one pork shoulder roast that I trimmed most of the visible fat off of. Just get as much as you possibly can to help keep the smart points lower. And then to this, I'm going to be adding some minced onion some of the G. Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce, and a can of crushed pineapple undrained. So we're gonna get all of that put into the crock pot, put it on low, and we're gonna let it cook the entire day. Once you get everything put into your crock pot, you're just gonna go ahead and just mix it all together to make sure that it's kind of spread evenly over your pork roast, and then you're gonna put this on low, and I will be back after dinner to show you the completed pulled pork. I just came home from work and here is the pulled pork in the crock pot. So it looks really good. I turned it to keep warm so that it'll stay warm until we're ready to eat. And with that, we are going to be having Trader Joe's zucchini fries. I'm gonna go ahead and toss these into my air fryer and then I will plate up my dinner and show you the completed dinner and give you all of the smart points. For my pulled pork sandwich, I'm gonna be having it on one of the Smart Baking Company a Smart Bun. This is how they come now, same bun, just a different packaging. These are only one Smart Point. This is what it looks like, so it is a full-size 
bun. I usually grill it. I like the taste of it a little bit better grilled, but you can have an entire full size bun for only one smart point. They come packaged individually, so freezing is really nice. They don't get freezer burnt. So you can buy these from smartbakingcompany.com. I will put my discount code here on the screen. That will save you 10%. And I will also link it down in the description box below. So if you're looking for a one smart point bun, this is the one to get. So here's tonight's dinner. I have my smart bun for one smart point, and then I have my pulled pork for a total of four smart points. That is because I mixed shoulder with loin. If you just did pork loin, you can lower the smart points. So my sandwich is a total of five points. And then over here, I have the zucchini fries from Trader Joe's. So this is one serving, which is four smart points. So this entire dinner is a total of nine points. For dinner tonight, I'm going to be making a chimichurri beef and rice. I am excited about this dinner. It sounds amazing. It should give that kind of Mexican vibe. Super excited. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. So first you're going to start with some white rice. You'll also need some chicken broth or some chicken stock, some salt, some avocado oil spray or some sort of non-stick cooking spray, some black pepper, red pepper flakes, oregano, cumin, paprika, minced garlic, some sort of meat. I'm gonna go ahead and do 96.4 extra lean ground beef, some parsley, a red pepper, an onion, and some fresh cilantro. The recipe also calls for a lime. I am actually going to omit that. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So the first thing that we need to do to get started on our dinner is chop up our vegetables and our herbs. So we're gonna chop up our red pepper, our onion, our parsley, and our cilantro. Pepper and onion will go into these bowls, and then our parsley and our cilantro will go into the small bowl. So let's get everything chopped up and ready to go. First thing that we need to get started is you're going to go ahead and add your pan to your stove and I went ahead and sprayed it with some of this avocado oil spray. We're going to let that get warmed up and then we'll be ready to start on our onions and you also want to get a pan of water boiling or get your rice prepared however you decide to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do the boil in a bag. Once your pan is nice and warm, you're gonna go ahead and add in your diced onion. We're gonna let those start to cook down a little bit. Once they get almost translucent, we'll go ahead and add in our burger, our red peppers, and our garlic. Once your onions start to become translucent, we're gonna go ahead and add in our pound of 96.4 lean ground beef or whatever meat you decided to use. We're also going to go ahead and add in our diced red pepper. And you could do yellow or orange or green, but the recipe does call for the red. You probably want to stick with a somewhat sweeter pepper, so one of your red, orange, or yellow. And then also we're going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of minced garlic. I never measure my garlic, so I'm just going to add a good size spoonful. We're going to give this a stir. We want to let everything cook down completely. We want to make sure our ground beef is completely brown and our vegetables are softened before we move on to the next step. Once your water comes to a boil, you can go ahead and add in your rice. This cooks literally in about 10 minutes. Fast, easy weeknight way to make rice. I also can make it in my instant pot, but this is super easy and it allows me to use the leftover rice that I have on hand and my hamburger, peppers, and onion is coming along nicely. Just a few more minutes until that is cooked through, and then we'll add in our chicken broth and our spices. Once your hamburger has cooked completely through and your vegetables are softened, we are gonna go ahead and add two cups of chicken broth or chicken stock to our pan, and then we are ready to add in 
our spices. So the first thing that we are going to add is we're gonna go ahead and add some paprika. The recipe calls for about a half of a teaspoon. So I'm just going to wing it. If you follow my channel, you know I very rarely measure my spices. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the oregano. And again, it does call for about a half of a teaspoon of oregano as well. I'm also going to be adding in some salt and pepper, and this, of course, is just to taste. So I'm just going to sprinkle in just a little bit of black pepper. It also calls for red chili pepper flakes. Now, we do not like our food very spicy, so it is an optional item. It calls for a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm literally just going to add a dash because I do not want my dinner too spicy so that we will want to eat it. I'm also going to add half of a teaspoon of cumin. And again, that is something that I'm going to just eyeball as well. And then last but certainly not least, I'm gonna be adding in some pink Himalayan sea salt. We're gonna let this cook down for just a few minutes, get those spices to meld nicely. My rice is done, I'm going to drain it, and we'll add that in as soon as our spices are nice and melded in to our hamburger and our veggies. Once your dinner starts to simmer, we are gonna go ahead and add in our two cups of cooked rice. We're gonna give this a good stir, get everything nice and mixed together. Let this simmer for an additional one minute, and then we are gonna go ahead and pop on our cover, and we're gonna remove this from the heat and let this sit for about eight minutes. Just let the rice really absorb all those flavors. I'm gonna go ahead and pop some corn into the microwave, and then I'll be back to show you the completed meal and plate it up and give you the smart points. So here is tonight's completed dinner. This looks so good. I decided to go ahead and divide mine up into four servings. I topped it with a little bit of the chopped Italian parsley and chopped cilantro, a tiny bit, about a half a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese. I did decide to pair that with some corn that I sprayed with spray butter and salt and pepper but this is a lot of food and the total for this is six smart points. So not bad for one fourth of that pan of dinner. It looks super good. I did try it, it has excellent, excellent flavor. And by adding that parsley and cilantro, that'll give it a really nice flavor. So this entire dinner is six smart points. Thank you for joining me on another WW5 Nights of Dinners. I hope that you enjoyed all five of the recipes that I shared with you. Every single solitary meal was absolutely delicious. Again, all of the recipes are right down in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to welcome you. Make sure that you hit that little red subscribe button and the bell, that way you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. I do a ton of recipe videos, weigh in, what I eat in a day, tips and tricks, you name it, it happens on my channel. I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, let me know what of the five dinners I showed you is your favorite, and if you try them, I'd love to know that as well. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!